Bloomberg is a huge global database of real-time information covering financial markets, economics and news. Today, Meg Westbury and I are going to cover some of the most popular and well-used functions of Bloomberg. As you can see, the interface is quite different to standard web-based databases, with its DOS look and feel. But don't be put off as it's actually very easy to use and has terrific help functions and excellent 24-7 support. We have four Bloomberg terminals in the Information Centre. You can log on with the account details beside the screens or create your own account to use during your time here. There are restrictions on some functions including exporting and we cannot give you access from outside of the Information Centre. Bloomberg has a special keyboard to help you navigate around the database. So you can quickly access key sections and functions. The most valuable keys are green and include go, which is the equivalent of return, the help key, which seeks matches for your search terms, and if pressed twice, puts you in direct contact with Bloomberg technical support. Also important is the menu key, which takes you back to the last screen you visited. You're going to need that one a lot. The first company we're going to look at today is Apple. To search for any company, you just type in the company name, and you'll notice that Bloomberg has a predictive text function. So I'm choosing Apple US Equity. This is the main company screen for Apple. For all the equities on the database, you're going to get this amount of um, matches of places to go next. We're going to start with our first code, which is DES, Security Description. You can either choose number two, which is the number it is on the menu, or you can click through with the mouse to access the content. OK, so here you've got the security description information for Apple, and this is the latest data, so it includes the most recent price chart, which is um, for the year, but also earnings, dividends, and also some management information. So you're going to get basic information using DES. It's often useful to use this because it's a way of identifying that this is exactly the company that you want to find, because sometimes it, it can be confusing. OK, we're going to move on to CF company filings. Now you can see at the top of the screen here it says Apple Inc Equity. So it knows we're already looking for Apple so it knows that we're now searching for CF company filings for Apple. So these are all the, um, all the different um, reports that are available. You can narrow this down by choosing from the menu bar here. Right, say we just want annual reports. We click on annual report and the contents all change. So you can see the most recent um, 10Ks and annual reports are all available here, going back year by year. You can also see you can export them as PDFs in this, in this column here. I should also point out that you can export most of the data at any time using this export function at the top right hand side of the screen. So you can see you can print screen and grab screen. Um, there's other options as well there. We went into the um, orange section here to choose annual report. You can also see you've got an option for keyword searching and for changing the dates. The rule is that anything in orange on the screen can be modified or you can enter information at that point. So number two was CF, company filings, a very important code. We're now going to move on to FA which stands for financial analysis. From here you can get um, comprehensive financial information for a company including historical fundamental data and futures estimates. It's a question of just selecting any tab that interests you um, by clicking or choosing the number that relates to it. So say I wanted to choose enterprise value, click through and you'll get the re relevant data coming up on the screen. So that was financial analysis. Another important code for equity research is SPLC, supply chain breakdown. So SPLC, return, so this gives you supply chain breakdown for a selected company, so you can analyse revenue exposure for the company, its suppliers and its customers, as well as track the performance of a company against its peers. Now you can see from the side here you've got an option to filter the information you're seeing. I'm going to click on filters and choose market cap, choose very large companies over 10 billion US dollars, and click on apply filters. And then close and the information that you're seeing on the screen about the supply chain will have changed. Number five, relative valuation, RV. This is a very, a very useful code, it's used a lot 
It allows you to perform relative evaluation analysis on a selected equity, so you can benchmark company performance against comparable companies in the same in industry. So you can show different competitors, essentially. So you can see it's identified that for the whole firm, competitors um, for Apple include Hewlett-Packard, Dell, BlackBerry, all those ones you'd expect to see. And for each of those, you've got financial data such as market cap, the last price, etc. Price earnings ratio, earnings per share, it's all there. You can narrow this down by selecting different options. So say we wanted communications equipment. So this is, this is part of Apple's business. Now we can see that we've got slightly different competitors, including Samsung and Nokia. So RV is a great place to start your research if you're comparing your subject company with other companies in that industry. Moving on, GP. This is the standard price chart for a company. It looks very nice, and it, it kind of puts your financial data into context by identifying whether prices are historically high or low. Now, something that's fun to do is to choose the maximum range. So then you can see how Apple's share price has changed from the point of its IPO, its initial public offering, back in 81. So you can see it's largely been an upward, an upward movement. What is also important to show, let me just take it back to one year, is that if you do the page down function, you can see all the data behind the chart. So this is on a daily basis for 2013. These are the different prices, the last price and the volume of price and the moving average for Apple over the last year. You can see that there's an option to scroll down the data on the right hand side here. So you've got all the data for that year. OK, if you want a bit more detail on the um, chart, then you can choose GIP, which gives you intraday data for a company. So this is all the information about shares for the current day. As I said earlier, you can hit menu at any time to go back to a, a menu function screen. So if we hit menu at this point, because we're currently looking at the intraday price chart for Apple, it's going to take us to a menu page which gives us all the charting and reporting functions for this security. If we hit it again, it's going to then take us back to the main company screen for Apple. So this is where all the main functions are, of which GP is a top level menu option, number 17 there that you can see. OK, we're now going to go into a different option, which is number 12 here, or BRC, which is for research. This is um, a very important area of Bloomberg because it gives you access to broker reports. Now occasionally some of these broker or investment reports are not available um, and you won't be able to get any further forward when you click on them. But for a lot of these, if you click through, you can see this page is an 11 page report from Nieb Needham and Company on Apple's fourth quarter. You can click to download the research report and it will start to download that and you'll be able to view that on screen. And here it comes. There we go. So you can get broker reports on Bloomberg as well. Another important equity, equity screening tool is EQS. And yeah, it stands for equity screening. This allows you to screen for companies that need that meet a customized set of criteria so you can generate investment ideas and or create a list of securities to follow. You can search and narrow by sectors, countries, fundamental data and other criteria. So for instance, if I go to sectors, I can select from the list. So say I want telecoms. So I'm going to include that. So I'm going to click on update. You can see there are 505 active companies on Bloomberg in telecoms. I could then choose an indice. In this instance, I'm going to choose the FTSE. And rather than using the menu options here, I'm just going to type in FTSE and it comes up with a FTSE 100 index. Click on update. That'll be added to my search. And as expected, it's showing two telecoms communication companies within the FTSE 100. And to view those, I can just click on results. So it's a way of screening for information. And there you go, Vodafone and BT. I could click through on either of those to get through to the full company information and related codes. 
OK, I'm now going to hand over to Meg, who's going to show you some more functions. So I think we're at number 10 in our list of 25 codes. And the first code that I'm going to show you is called Bloomberg Industries, which is a very important and well-used code in, in Bloomberg. So you type BI for Bloomberg Industries. Bloomberg Industries provides key industry data and written analysis from a team of industry experts so you can gain better insight into where an industry stands today and where it might be headed in the near future. You can look at specific regions first. So I'm going to choose North America. Then I want to show you how you can drill down into specific industries. So I'm going to choose utilities and then power generation. And from here, you're given quite a few um, categories on the left that you can choose from. And in particular, we find the theme section to be very interesting. Here you're given lots of good overviews of what's going on in a particular industry with PDFs that you can print out. Bloomberg is also very strong in company news. So I want to show you how to use the company news function. I'm first going to bring up another country, uh, another company. I'm going to bring up Standard Chartered. And quickly what I'm going to do is look at their price chart. So I'm going to type GP for price chart. And I'm going to go back a year. And notice here, in August of 2012, there was a major price dip on just one particular day. And if you have your mouse, you see it was on August 7th, 2012. So what happened on that particular day to make that drastic price dip? You can type CN for company news. Go up here to the orange date box and change the date back to August 7th of 2012. And when you click on it, you, are see, you see a bunch of news stories from that particular day, which makes it very clear why there was that particular price dip. As I said, the news features are very, very strong on Bloomberg. And so if you're interested in what the most um, read news stories of the day are on Bloomberg, you can type in READ. And you get an interesting bit of crowdsourcing. It shows you a list of what's hot on Bloomberg news right now. Bloomberg is quite strong with equities as well. So the next code I want to show you is WEI for World Equity Indices. WEI is a comprehensive market surveillance tool that allows you to monitor and compare real-time price and volume data for the world's equity indices. You can change geographical region. So I'm going to go ahead and change that to the Americas. And you can actually change currency as well. I'm going to change that to the Japanese yen. So the next code I'd like to show you is Mergers and Acquisitions, so that's MA. This allows you to track and analyze real-time mergers and acquisitions data, customize the view for specific regions, sectors, and advisors, easily drill down into individual deals to see deal-level data, and find comparable deals which provide precedence for analyzing pending deals. So again, you can change the reason, region quite easily. I'll change it to North America and you get a different view of, of recent mergers and acquisitions. The next code is Treasury and Money Markets, which is BTMM. This displays all major rates, securities, and economic releases for a selected country, providing you a comprehensive overview of the current interest rate environment so you can react quickly to changing market conditions. Again, you can change the country quite easily. It defaulted to the United States, but I can change it to anything I want quite quickly. That's the overview for Egypt. Country overviews are also quite strong in Bloomberg. C-O-U-N will get you a basic overview of a country. It provides an overview of a country's financial markets, providing a wide range of information about a country's sovereigns, financial health, economic outlook, and potential risk. Again, I can go up to this orange box easily change the country, so I'm going to change it to Turkey, and you get an interesting snapshot of what's going on there. And finally, I want to talk about bonds. Bloomberg is very strong with bond information. WB will take you into the world bond markets. This allows you to monitor and chart sovereign bond yields, spreads, and historical performance all on one screen. You have a tab for spreads. You have a tab for curves and then you can get back to the bonds overview. 
We've reached number 18 in our best 25 codes on Bloomberg. We're now going to look at some economic functions. So ECST is a really important one. It stands for World Economic Statistics and offers global statistics by country, giving you data such as national accounts, consumer prices, labour market data, and much more. So the standard view here is UK, but we can switch that by just entering another country in the box. I'm going to choose Brazil. And you can see we've got all that data now for Brazil, all that national accounts data, GDP, exports, imports, etc. So that's ECST. ECTR is also an important function. And this relates to trade flow. I think this is per perhaps one of the coolest looking pages on Bloomberg. It's an interactive map that allows you to see the import and export values between a selected country and its global trading partners. The data is from the IMF. Now you can take the data back all the way to 1980. So I'm going to select 1980 and you can see the data changes and you can see the key trading partner for the United States, no surprises, is Canada followed by Japan and then Germany back, back in 1980. But if we go back to the present, 2012, so China and Mexico have become more important players. And you can also move around this graphic to look at the different relationships. So that's ECTR. The next code I'm going to show you is ECFC, which stands for Economic Forecasts. You can see here you've got um, GDP, you've got unemployment percentage, you've got um, central bank rates, all of this information. Again, you've got the options to change countries and regions and different countries here. So that's ECFC, another important economic code. FXC. FXC gives you data on currencies, and specifically it's the currency rates matrix. And this is being updated, as you can see, in real time. So if you need data on currencies, this is the place to come. It displays spot, forward, and fixing rates, so you can compare both real-time and historical values. The last code I'm going to show you before Meg takes over and shows you the last few is WCRS. This stands for the World Currency Ranking System. This will give you links to current and historical graphs relating to currencies. And it's a great place to start if you're doing any sort of currency research. OK, just three more codes, two more on commodities, and then my favorite one of all in all of Bloomberg. So if you've stuck with us this long, you definitely deserve something fun at the end. The first commodities code I want to show you is called Regional Commodities, or CMDS. This provides you with a comprehensive overview of the current commodity landscape, including commodity sectors, currency rates, indices, and economic releases for the selected region. Easy to change region right here. I'm going to go ahead and change it over to Europe. And notice how the view changes. You can also get a single commodity overview with CMBQ. This displays multiple fundamentals of pricing and production data for specific market commodity pairings. I'm going to go ahead and change the market to gold. And here you can view, for example, future contracts, historical closing prices, curve charts for future contracts, real-time pricing for a commodities call and put options. Finally, my favorite code of all in Bloomberg, which is BMAP, which stands for Bloomberg Commodity Maps. This allows you to query the Bloomberg Energy Database and generate maps for various, various commodity categories, including energy assets, vessels, and mines. So what I want to show you is a way for you to be able to see all of the global oil refineries in North America. So I'm going to go under energy assets and I'm going to choose global oil refineries and I'm going to click search. And then you see a global map populated with refineries. I'm then going to go under actions and fly to North America. Okay, now I've got the North American view. I'm then going to Zoom in on Texas. Okay. I can click on any of these and it will tell me that there are multiple oil refineries. So I continue to drill down by right clicking. Okay. 
Okay, and when I get down to a single one, I can then left click on it to see all sorts of interesting information about the refinery, including whether it's currently under operation, its total capacity, and I could click DES to find out more company information. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, which shows you the top functionality of Bloomberg, but I hope gives you an idea of the sheer size of Bloomberg and as well as, as its value. We've got lots of help guides on our website for getting started with Bloomberg, as well as next to the terminals in the, in the Information Center, where there's also a handout of these top 25 codes. As you start to use Bloomberg more, you'll find that you're, that you're starting to use the Excel add-in for Bloomberg much more, and that's functionality that we can cover with you directly should you ever need help. Also, the 24-7 live chat help with Bloomberg is extremely good, and you can get to it by clicking the Help button twice. Help, help. And that should open up a chat screen, and they're there to help 24-7 anytime. Thank you for watching the video.